Hey, how are you guys doing? My name is Son, and in today's video, we're talking about the biggest con man in the music industry. Let's talk about Lou Pearlman. What does a fake airline, a $300 million Ponzi scheme, and the biggest pop stars of the 90s have in common? Exactly, Lou Pearlman. If you haven't seen it, I can just highly and strongly recommend the Boy Band Con on YouTube, which is the documentary about the entire thing. This is essentially just a summary or a short introduction into that topic, so if you want to know more about it, please make sure to check that out, I'll link it below. And let me just tell you, this story is insane in every sense of the word. Who is Lou Pearlman? Perlman was born on June 19, 1954 in Flushing, New York. He grew up across the road from Flushing Airport and was fascinated by the blimps taking off and landing at the airfield. Interestingly, he also claimed to be the first cousin of Art Garfunkel. I'm actually not sure if that is true or not. Um, he showed up at his birthday party at some point apparently, but uh, we'll just leave it at that. See, Perlman has always been incredibly business oriented. During his first year in college, he actually wrote a business plan for an helicopter air taxi service in New York City, which is a business that he actually founded in 1970. And his interest in blimps and airships never really faded. He rented out a blimp that never existed for advertising to Jordag, and then took the money from the deal to actually pay for one that instantly crashed. Now, because he had insured this thing for $3 million, while it was actually worth around $10,000, he made a ton of money from that crash, moved to Orlando and then started signing deals with MetLife, SeaWorld and McDonald's. Lou Pearlman is actually one of the originators of blimp advertising as we know it today. He also launched a commercial airline, Transcontinental Airlines, that he sold investment opportunities from. We will come back to that one later. Now at this point you're probably thinking, hold up, how has nobody caught up with him yet? You can't just pull non-existent stuff out of thin air, but Lou Pearlman could. People who knew him would describe him as jovial, fun and incredibly friendly. He could make you feel like you're the only person in the room. Lou was an amazing talker and he could have probably sold you anything. There are a lot of stories surrounding Lou, many of which he might have actually made up himself. But for now, let's take a look at his endeavors in the music business. Lou got into contact with New Kids on the Block when he was renting out one of his aircrafts for one of the tours that they did. Now, when he questioned on how guys that were that young could afford an aircraft like that, he was confronted with just astonishing numbers from the music business. Hundreds of millions in record sales, even more in touring and merch sales, and Lou said, I can probably do that too. So he set out to cast a boy band with the sole purpose of emulating the success from New Kids on the Block. And that's how the Backstreet Boys were born. Meanwhile, Lou had made a ton of money and had them quit their jobs or their school so they could focus full time on this thing that they were working on, since he was essentially paying for everything while they were going through this exhausting training program. Side note, even if this is all fabricated and all of these are casted individuals, I cannot stress enough how incredibly impressed I am by the fact that they actually learn how to perform without being out of breath. Anybody who has ever performed on a stage in like a movement intensive show knows what this is about and how incredibly tough that is. Keep that up for two hours, that's just wild. Without being out of breath, while singing, insane. So time passes and they release their first album and with the backing of Lose Millions, the band blew up. So much so that this is actually what started MTV's TRL. People were watching 24-7 and they were selling shows out all over the country. They essentially created their own music trend and became the sole performers in it. Sales were astronomical, they sold millions in the first week. That was unheard of back then and even today. These figures are still incredibly ridiculous. So everything was going great, right? No. So what I didn't mention is that during the entire time that they were training and working on becoming the Backstreet Boys, they had never made a single cent. Now with all of the success coming their way, they obviously wondered about the money. Everybody was getting paid except for them. So finally, at a fancy dinner, Lou pulled out the envelopes that they were hoping for and placed them in front of everybody. Now just quickly, imagine you're them. You're selling out stadiums, you're charting in top positions, you're selling millions of copies of your album in a week. And fans would kill to just look at a window that you might be standing behind. What would you expect the number on that check to be? Millions? Six figures? After three years, the members got $10,000 each. That's not even minimum wage. They would have made more money if they would have worked the same time at a restaurant. 
And that's not all of it. Every dinner, every flight, every travel expense, every night in a hotel that Lou claimed he was paying for was actually coming from their income. So essentially, Lou invited them to all of these things from their own money. Now that's wild, but of course that's not everything. While he managed the Backstreet Boys, he simultaneously built and sync, who grew up to be their biggest competitor, managed by the guy who they trusted the most. Now I know this is already way too much at once, but it just keeps going. When both bands, Backstreet Boys and NSYNC, finally had enough and decided to get out of their contract, he claimed to be a member of these bands and he also claimed to have full rights and full ownership of every brand and every asset that goes along with it. The person that all of these guys were regarding as a father figure threw them all under the bus. But we're not done yet though. You remember Transcontinental Airlines that we mentioned in the beginning that Lou was selling investment opportunities from? Well, both boy bands were assigned to Transcontinental Records. And you might sense that something is off already. Others did too. Employees were wondering why they were flying with United and American and Delta when Lou supposedly had his own airline. On top of that, investors of the airline sometimes jokingly claimed that they were owning the bands too which was foreshadowing to say the least. The airline never existed. Lou tricked people with a model airplane that wasn't even his. And he defrauded investors by around 300 million dollars. Perlman was sentenced to 25 years in prison. He entered prison in 2008 and died from heart failure in 2010. This is just an insane story and it's probably one of the craziest publicly known stories from the entertainment industry. I personally can't believe he got away with half the stuff that he did. I mean, how do you even fake an airline? And with that, I want to end this video. Thank you so much for watching and just let me know what you think of this story in the comments down below. Like I said, I personally think it's insane. And if you want to know more about it, then make sure to check out the Boy Band Con. This documentary is just wild and I can just strongly recommend it to you if you want to know more about it because we have just been scratching the surface on this one and there's so much more to unpack. So if you want to know more about it, there's a link in the description that you can click and then you get the full story. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, then hit the like button. Also hit the subscribe button if you want to see more of my videos and be updated whenever I post a new one. And also I've been doing semi-regular live streams right now. So if you want to be joining for that, just keep an eye out on the community tab and I'll post an update on when we're going live. Maybe tomorrow, maybe in two days, who knows. But uh, I'll just, you know, switch it between videos and live streams. I think it will be cool. So we'll be happening on Twitch and on YouTube at the same time so you won't miss it uh, anywhere where you look. So thanks again for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one. Take care, stay safe, bye.